Good morning and welcome back to 501 CTV. I'm your host, Janelle Harris. This is the podcast that talks to system change leaders, thought leaders, nonprofits, and nonprofit partners to find out what's going on that's new out there in the world of nonprofits. And today, you guys, this is an exciting day because this is actually our first episode of season four. And I have an amazing guest here today. I'm so excited to talk to her. I would like to introduce Kristen Calder. With the, She is the CEO of the Literacy Coalition of Palm Beach County. We have so much information to cover today. Like I said, off camera, we could probably talk for hours and hours. Um, Literacy Coalition is, um, is unique to Palm Beach County alone. I'm going to let Kristen dive in in a second here and tell us all about how it got started, how she got involved what the heck they're doing out in Palm Beach County because there's so much information, you guys. And to me, this is a really near and dear topic to me because I am an avid reader. I've lived in libraries since I was a kid. Um, my own children love the library and th the whole the whole program is just so exciting to me. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you for joining us. And I'm gonna let you take it away and kind of um, get us started with um, how you got involved where did Literacy Coalition come from? We talked about it's been around since 1989. Yes, so we were really past. fortunate in Palm Beach County that we had community and business leaders that got together and recognized there was a need actually for adult literacy mm -hmm. to pair um, those that needed help with those that were providing help. Okay. And so that was really how it came to be that they recognized that we needed to have a better uh, communication between those two groups of people. And over the course of the last 34 years, we have had a, um, a huge growth in the understanding of the significance of early literacy, children's mm -hmm. literacy, and really lifelong literacy. And as a result, even though we started out as an adult literacy mm -hmm. organization and putting those two groups together, we've really grown to focus on uh, literacy from infancy through adulthood. Okay. And also um, as a result of that, um, become a leader for the community with anything related to literacy, whether we are you know, partnering, pairing people together, providing resources, or delivering firsthand our own programs. Got you, and I think that's really interesting because I think even for myself, when I think literacy, I immediately think children. But, um, and as we get talking here, um, I mean, you guys serve, the number's probably grown since, but you know, over 50,000 adults and children just in our community alone, which I think is amazing. I, I don't know how you guys do it, but you're gonna tell me how you do it. Yes. Um, but I think that's a big misconception that, you know, literacy is kind of just, uh, you know, limited to children in our in our population. And to me, that's uh, that's gotta be a, a really kind of, um, sad, uh, scary thing to navigate as an adult. Absolutely. And you know, it, it's, uh, you're never too late to learn, never too old to learn. And it is an issue that affects um, adults as well as children. Um, you know, we know that there is so much significance in terms of brain development from birth to three years of age. And a lot of people think, oh, you learn to read when you go to school. Right. But actually, it's significant and important to have early literacy skills that are developed really from infancy, um, you Absolutely. know, uh, to prepare you for kindergarten and preschool mm -hmm. um, as part of that. So, um, you know, that's why the majority of our programs now focus on children's literacy. Really? Um, we do have adult and community education programs. And then also really unique is we have two family literacy programs. Cool. And um, that's just a couple of our nine programs yes. that we have. And that's how we get to that <laughs> big number. Nine of, small programs, you guys. Serving more deal. than 50,000 um, community members, adults, children, youth, and families all over Palm Beach County from Jupiter to Boca Raton through Wellington and out to Belle Glade. Yeah. So we you know provide these programs and they it, it really is um, in more than 160 sites. We have the Bloom Literacy Center in Boynton mm -hmm. Beach for education, training, and outreach, which is a fantastic training facility that we use for our Literacy AmeriCorps members. I was reading about that. Yes. Tell me about that because that's yeah. that's actually, a, is that like a newer program? It's, it's really unique. So our building is, um, our center is 10 years old. We just celebrated 10 years and it's a great resource for us and the community because it allows us to use that facility for our Literacy AmeriCorps members, yep. um, which are mostly recent college graduates who come to Palm Beach County okay. and join our Literacy AmeriCorps team. Interesting. Now, AmeriCorps 
Encore is actually just celebrated in September of 2023, um, 30 years wow. um, uh, nationally. Correct. And then we've had that program for almost as many years. That's awesome. And we bring members to the community that do a year of service, but it is a full-time job, and they gotcha. do get a stipend and an educational award. Okay. And it is, um, they serve as graduation coaches, reading tutors, mentors. Um, they are also out in the community on the weekends, so they might be doing a gleaning project. They might be painting a house. They might be so um, cool. doing a beach cleanup, whatever it is for the betterment of our community. And if there is a natural disaster or mm -hmm. a hurricane on the way, they are the ones that also go and have been trained to serve um, at our emergency operations centers, gotcha. at the shelters for special really cool. needs. So that program is really astounding, and they do their training with us at our Bloom Literacy Center, and then they're placed in sites all over the county. Awesome. So they might be with other community organizations, with our partners at the school district, with other libraries. So the AmeriCorps program is really one of our, um, our you know, uh, just shining stars when it comes to programs and, and what allows us to have an impact. And then our other program that does a lot of um, operations out of our Bloom Literacy Centers, our Building Better Readers program. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Yeah, for sure. So maybe you can, um, oh, how did you get involved with the Literacy Coalition? Because I always like to know the background and, and where my people come from that I'm yeah, talking to. Yeah, so um, I started out actually as a volunteer. Okay. And I really um, admired the work that the organization was doing. Mm -hmm. And I said to a friend of mine who was on the board, if there's ever an opportunity for me to join, um, I was already working for another nonprofit and in, in the community and had gone through a lot of training uh, as a past president of the Junior League of Boca Raton awesome. and gone through many leadership programs like Leadership Delray Beach, Leadership Boca Raton, Leadership Palm Beach County. And I was ready for, you know, something more. And um, she said there was a volunteer um, position open for me to join and join the board. And so I did that for four years. Awesome. I got to really understand the organization mm -hmm. and really value how well run and efficient the organization was and the see the impact that they were having yeah and um chris and i were talking offline it's it's pretty cool i'm, I'm always blown away by nonprofits that you know just kind of pop up organically in our community you know literacy coalition it's got like a big name and i was like oh is this a, a national organization that you know just falls into palm beach county and it's not you guys it's just a standalone uh, organization that's out there just promoting literacy specifically in Palm Beach County. And that's huge. If you look at the numbers that you guys serve, how, the longevity that you've been around, and also these programs. So let's talk about these nine, at least nine programs. Yeah. So um, when I transitioned from the board to be the CEO, which is about 10 years ago, um, you know, we looked at all of our programs and assessed the needs in the community. And that's what I love about our organization is that we are small enough that we can say, wow, we see a need. We're going to develop a program that fits that need, recruit volunteers to support mm -hmm. that. But we're also large enough and substantial enough to make an impact. Right. And so these nine programs, um, we're working with um, pediatricians, for example. Well, I should start even sooner than that because every baby that's born in, a, in the hospital in Palm Beach County goes home with a book thanks to a partnership that Aww, we have. That's awesome. With many um, nurse providers in the hospitals and with funding from Children's Services Council mm -hmm. to provide this through our early literacy book distribution. Awesome. Then we work with pediatricians. And, you know, sometimes parents wonder, when should I start reading to my child? Well, at their first well checkup, yes. when they go to the pediatrician as part of the Reach Out and Read program that we deliver, um, a baby will get a book and the parents get a book Brilliant. to take that home. Yes. And they actually get 10 books over the course of five years that they would be going for their well checkups throughout their first five years of life. So cool. And the pediatrician talks to the parents about the importance of early literacy, verbal interaction, right. all the things that they can assess even in a child's development from what they do when they actually get a book in their hand. For example, if they put it in their mouth and try to take a bite, <laughs> that's a very normal, yes. good reaction it's okay. <laughs> that they're going to have. Right. Um, so those programs start to, to really help children um, prepare for early literacy skills so that they can be prepared for kindergarten. Kindergarten readiness is one of the biggest issues that we have. Yes. And that parents might think that children learn to read or that education really starts in school. But the matter of the truth is that 
um, a parent that. is the your child's first teacher. Yep. And there is a lot to be said for children that have that kind of support early on. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, I think it's so huge. And you know, a lot of times if you don't, if you're a new parent, you know, if you have somebody right on the front lines that are telling you, hey, this is, <laughs> do this, you know, and here's a tool to do it. And I love that it's like an actual physical book. Yes. I know even my own kids, you know, they, they want to read everything online. Everything's digital. And I'm <laughs> like, no, I'm like, there's something to be said about a real book in your hands and, you know, turning the pages. So I think that's really important and, and really cool. So I love that it's starting so, so early on yes. and that's important. And, you know, I was, I was thinking too, like, as I was going through a lot of your information, you know, I know, um, COVID was like a big game changer, unfortunately, and was probably the crux of a lot of, um, what's going on now. So years later, what you guys are probably seeing, and maybe you can talk a little bit about that, but I was like, you know, I'm sure that this has not had a great impact and, you know, being able to pivot and create those programs and move around, like you said, and, and, and be able to create, you know, new things for, for challenges that you were seeing. Is that something that you guys have noticed and, and how, how did you address that? Yes. So we um, definitely had a lot of struggling readers in our community and it's not just our Palm Beach County, yeah. it's our country. Yes. There is a national campaign for grade level mm -hmm. reading because students have not been reading on grade level and we're seeing more of that in the news, the statistics that in math and in reading, our students are falling farther and farther behind. And so during the, um, the pandemic, we adapted our programs so that we could still provide those online yeah. um, and when, when possible in person. And we actually um, learned some valuable lessons that, um, that we could still see gains mm -hmm. with our um, trained tutors that we're working with and providing the tutoring to students okay um that there were still gains made and it was still a valuable connection for them in terms right. of um you know bonding with a caring adult and also um, with improving their reading skills and so we've been able to keep that as a component of some of our programs but looking at the students of of where they are and the repercussions of the the pandemic and having to you know um, participate in online learning and the challenges that came yes. with that we see students that um, for example that might have been in second grade who missed kindergarten um, who missed the foundational year. Yes. And so therefore, when they got to second grade, not only were they learning just how to go to school, they were still learning their letters and their numbers right. and basics that you would learn in preschool or kindergarten. Right. So as a result, one of our programs that we actually developed 10 years ago, so it was even before yeah, the pandemic. Like, Here so we go, we're ready. We knew <laughs> that this was gonna be needed. Yeah. Um, because there, there is a, a, a very, um, uh, popular phrase that you know that explains basically in a nutshell up until third grade you're learning to read but once you get to th past third grade from fourth grade on you really need to be able to read to learn and yeah and so and that's what it comes down to and so we are seeing students that were even more behind because of the pandemic yeah because they missed that year that's year and a half so unfortunate because of that um and then you look at also, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about the science of reading and um, the school district who we developed the, the program in partnership with. We so sat cool. down side by side and said, we want to compliment the classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do something that's different or sure. in any way that is not supportive of what you're already doing, because we recognize that, you know, we're trying to be there as a support and enhance what the, the child is getting in the classroom from their own teacher. And so the, um, you know, the children that we're working with, we have seen them make great strides um, through the program awesome. um, and to improve their reading scores to be reading closer on grade level. Yeah. But what we also realized is that we need to um, expand that. Originally, we were working with first and second grade students. We realized we needed to keep the third graders in that because they were still not ready. And then we ideally would love to grow this program to that we could add kindergartners. And then I always say, you know, we look at the data, which the most current data says that 52% of the students in Palm Beach County on third grade are not reading on grade level. Right. And that's obviously, that's more than half. Yeah. So that is a huge issue. And so I look at that and I think, well, you know, I know that that many students are not being held back. 
So what does that mean for fourth graders, fifth graders, sixth graders who right. are not proficient readers that get passed on? So ideally, I would love to have more support to grow that program. Right now, we're in 36 schools That's in a Palm lot. Beach County, yeah. where we are, and this is the best part about this program, we're recruiting community members, volunteers that we bring in and we train them to, they go through extensive training mm -hmm. and we provide support throughout the year. Okay. Um, and they give their time. It could be anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours a week. That's pretty that awesome. Volunteers are doing to help the life of a child. Yeah. And our volunteers say, you know, it's really remarkable to think that an hour or two of my week is actually changing the life okay. of a child. It's so like, ah, I just have like such a sweet spot for this whole topic because I mean, reading is, it is the base foundation for everything else. I mean, if you struggle in reading, yeah. everything else is like so frustrating. Every subject is frustrating, you know? I think about like just taking tests and, you know, homework that comes home with, with my yes. fourth grader now. I mean, if you if you read one word wrong in that sentence, you just changed the whole, you know, the whole question of what they're asking you to do in that assignment. Right. And if it's you've huge. never seen a word or heard a word, how would you even know when how to no pronounce idea. or read that word? Correct. So a lot of it it's too huge. is is the exposure. And um, so in this program, not only do we have the children read to work mm -hmm. on their reading level, we have the adults read a higher level text to the awesome. children so that they can develop their imagination, mm -hmm. increase their vocabulary, and be exposed to um, you know more words yeah. because there there is something called the 30 million word gap and it is pertaining to the fewer number of words that children from lower socioeconomic groups are exposed to right. than children from more affluent families. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's that's an amazing program. Um, and we'll we'll touch on that again later when I when I ask you guys for your help because we're <laughs> gonna get into volunteering and how the community can help a little bit as well. Um, is there any other of those nine programs that are near and dear that you wanna touch on? And then we'll, we'll get into some of your events too because you guys have an awesome like little um, schedule of events that I want to make sure people know about as well. Yes. Well, you know, um, we talked about our Literacy AmeriCorps and Building Better mm -hmm. Readers. Um, our two family literacy programs are really very special because okay. as we talked about a parent being the child's first teacher, and, you know, we often look at that at the data and say, well, we know because those children are from lower socioeconomic mm -hmm. groups that maybe that that's why some of that, uh, that they're not performing as well. But, you know, there is actually a thought out there that it actually is not, um, it doesn't matter about your status. Mm -hmm. It is actually how engaged your parents are in your education and in that process. And so with our two family literacy programs, we're trying to equip the parents so they can not only improve their skills, whether it be their English skills, their literacy skills, right. so that they can get a better job, but also to appreciate and understand what their children are going through, whether it be preschool or um, middle school, which is what the, the two programs are really mm -hmm. um, geared at for the children in terms of um, supporting their academic enrichment and their education. And so trying to break that intergenerational cycle of poverty and the whole concept of family literacy so that the parents and the children are learning together. Mm -hmm. um, just two more programs too. That's just awesome. um, at, we have a couple of after school programs that really get out and about in the community. Okay. And both of them, and I love these because I think they're so innovative. They they connect literature to two different topics. One is based on um, re, it's called Read Lead Succeed. Okay. And it's a social social emotional learning program. Gotcha. And it's a great way for children to read a book and see how did that character handle that situation, whether it be talking about um, something traumatic that happened or change or um, you know what it's what happens when someone's bullied what do you do what you know are right. you the the bystander do you get involved and creating empathy um, and showing that diversity in the books that's that awesome. we're, we're choosing and then the other one is called stories in stem okay and that's also very cool because um, it lets children that who may not necessarily be interested in science technology engineering and math mm -hmm. it exposes them to those topics through a book or a character through literature well, and they do a lot of fun, cool science experiments. And um, so we're just looking at, at ways to um, get children excited about reading right. and then provide skills that they need to be successful in school and in life. Which is awesome. And I think it's a it's it's a cool way to do it through like aftercare too, because 
you know, aftercare when I was in aftercare when I was a kid. It was like go run around and right. you know, you know, if you can make um, good use of your time when they're there yeah, anyway. Yeah, you've been doing a science project, learning, Absolutely. learning at the same time, having fun, not even realizing yeah, that that's, you're. That's that's the best part, and that's totally what was going through my mind right now. I'm like, you know, they're they're getting all these skills and they don't even realize that yes. you know they're learning, which is which is. And exposure, Brilliant. exposure to all of yeah, that. Yeah, that's great. Um, and I and I like that. Um, you know, one thing that I noticed too is you guys are um, heavily partnered up in the community. So you're you're trying to do all these um, programs and going down these different like kind of creative avenues of you know where can we interject more you know more literacy programs here and um and i love that i love that you guys are you're heavy in with the school district which is huge and i know and you know you have a ton of other community partners out there and whenever i have my nonprofit friends on i'm always like this is so cool like you guys are just always this big kind of united family out there um in our in our county and beyond and it's it's cool to see that thank you well so we're working neat. all with the same families yeah so, exactly um, they, it's and a there's a good. lot of different needs that need to be met yeah i think that's wonderful um so following in with fun things that are going on um i know that you guys have a few events throughout the year um loop for literacy you do some golf some 5ks there's a luncheon Tell me about a few of those that are coming up. What's the most recent ones, your favorite ones, and what are the yes. ones that we cannot miss? Okay. Well, the way that we um, help fund a lot of our programs is through community support, um, through grants that mm -hmm. we get, and then also through our events. Yep. So I always say we don't have events just because we like to have events. <laughs> we have events <laughs> because they're actually helping pay for our program Perfect. in Belle Glade or in Delray Beach or in Wellington or yes. Jupiter or Boca. Um, so there is a reason we do these, but they are also to share um, the excitement and love of literacy. Yes. So our um, our Loop for Literacy is a great, it's a 5K walk, run, and cycling event, which is cool. very unique. It yeah. actually got its start around Lake Okeechobee as a cycling really? event. Really? And has adapted over the years. Neat. Now we're at Bryant Park in Lake Worth Beach. And it is, um, it's a great way for people to actively support literacy, um, to come together as a team, mm -hmm. a group, and you know we find that we have so many wonderful supporters that want to come out and just be a part of our effort absolutely and um, you get really cool book themed um, gear and souvenirs and a awesome. medal that's um, always got some great cool book um, <laughs> nice. theme to it very fun so yeah so that is coming up um, and that will be february um, february 10th oh there you go february Look at 10th, 2024 I like this. This is yes. a nice little, I don't know if we can show this, but this is a nice little card that you guys have made of your events. That's so cool. Um, okay, so that's Loop for Literacy, you guys. And then I also noticed um, Read for the Records coming up, right? So that's end of October. Yeah, so that's a great event um, for volunteers to get involved. Everybody tries to break a world record of the most number of adults reading to children the same book on that same day, okay. October 26th. Yeah. It's usually the last Thursday of October. And even our municipal leaders get in on the fun oh, cool. and have a friendly competition. Okay. Um, and I will tell you that Wellington has been uh, the winner for um, the large categories and awesome. um, or the large, uh, for the in the last few years. Um, but it's a great way for the community to come together and support early literacy. And Kristen, do they do that at the libraries? Mm -hmm. Many of the libraries oh, that's do. That's what I thought because I remember this. Yeah, one. many of the libraries do it, and we also um, send a copy of the book thanks to um, the support from PNC, our partner locally. We send books to every media specialist in okay. Palm Beach County, so every school, elementary school, will have a so copy cool. of the book. And we send out more than 600 copies to preschool centers, awesome. um, preschool uh, preschool sites um, throughout the county, so that um, children can be read. Uh, you know, and enjoy the book. Awesome. I love that. Um, and then next year, you guys in April, follow them on, on their, um, their social and their websites. Cause these, this, all of this is on here. Um, but there's a couple of things also coming up in April. So there's like a luncheon and then there's a golf tournament as well. Yes. So we want to be able to support literacy coalition. Um, and then last, before we, we wrap up, because again, this goes so fast, we could talk forever and I love this topic. Um, but let's talk about how, how, the community can get involved. So if people are listening right now and they say, you know what, this is so cool. Kristen, you have captivated me. I want to get involved. What can people do to volunteer their time or, or be involved? As you said, listed on our website, there's a lot of volunteer okay. options for you to take a look at. And you can volunteer to read once a year, 
once a month, once a week. Okay. Um, some awesome. of it requires training, but the opportunities that are once a year, once a month, where we're just looking for people to come in and read and yeah. read to a child. We put together fantastic, really great um, literacy kits that get um, paired. So if we get paired up, we read the story cool. together, we do a fun activity, and then the child gets to take home the book. I call it efficient volunteering. So cool. We have um, five uh, reading dates where we do um, something called Read With Me, where you sign up and we read to kindergarten students at six different schools throughout the county. Nice. And That's so really there are neat. a lot of opportunities. Um, so there's some that require more of a commitment and training and then others um, are you know just as as your time permits right awesome is there any um as far as like the reading too is there anything for kids or is this all adults well, only adults so we have teen opportunities gotcha. um, we're looking at developing those um, every book that we have has a sticker on the back that's actually geared to go toward the adult um, okay. in case they need help gotcha. um, with their literacy skills and so we sticker the back of more than a hundred thousand books so that's sometimes a, a very easy um, activity for teen volunteers also. So um, we uh, book sorting and book drives and, um, you know, putting together um, literacy kits for cool. us. That's a great thing they can do as well. Good to know. I have some teenagers in the house, so <laughs> I'm asking for them too. But um, anything else, Kristen? I mean, I, I, I love everything that you guys are doing and I'm, I'm so impressed with all that you have done and all the programs that you guys have come out with. Um, is there anything that you want to leave our listeners with today? that they absolutely should know about Literacy Coalition well, of Palm Beach County. One of the things we do is to um, promote literacy so we can achieve literacy. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, one of the things coming up is our Read Together Palm Beach County um, initiative, which is a one book, one community campaign where okay. everybody comes together, reads the same book at the same time, yeah, period, so cool. comes together for book discussions. And then that author will be the speaker at our April 11th oh, Love of Literacy Luncheon. That's so, so cool. Um, that's something that anybody that likes to read should pay attention to that especially okay. for book clubs and if you're looking for a good read and just to know that you know this is you know planting seeds so the the work that we're doing now we're going to see um you know the uh the successes of this for years to come because Absolutely. the children now are going to be our workforce of the future and we want them to be well educated and um and be able to have a chance to succeed and sometimes it's just as simple as teaching them to read and giving a little bit of time and a little bit of funding yeah. to make that happen Awesome. Well, we're excited to follow you and continue to see your path here. And I appreciate you joining us here today. Thank you. And um, you guys check them out. Um, we'll put up all of their websites and social here and get involved. I mean, this is a really easy, you know, easy thing to, to do and, and be a part of. And to me, it's super exciting. I love anything to do with books and reading. So when I saw you coming on today, I was super excited. So um, thank you again for joining us. Thank you. And uh, thanks for joining us on, again, our first episode of season four on 501 CTV. We'd like to thank Connie house studios wellington's first and only social content creation studio and we will see you next time on 501 ctv thank you